I use EDIUS Workgroups for our news production and it has quite a powerful colour correcting suite of tools. Unfortunately, some of the footage that I encounter at work is less than ideal. If I click on the waveform and vector scope monitor, you can see that this image that I've parked on is quite overexposed. And in fact, the image is overexposed and that the file has been imported at the wrong level. Notice that above the 100% line of the waveform monitor, there is an excursion of Luma and I have the IRE setting of the waveform monitor turned on, not composite, which gives me a greater range, but that's saturation as well, so I don't need that. I just need the brightness levels. And over here on the vector scope, I can see that the white balance is completely wrong and quite green and yellow. I should be able to see a more even balance of this image in the middle of the vector scope. So let's apply an effect to try and overcome these issues. Now, ordinarily, I would recommend grabbing the primary color corrector and putting on the timeline. I already have one that I've made in a group of tools called Broadcast Safe by Dave, that's me, hi. I have a number of variations of color correction tools that you can easily apply to your news footage to make it look better. One of those is an exposure reduction to correct this over value. So let's apply that to the timeline and instantly all the levels become legal between 0 and 100%. Some of the image may of course get darker but it now, at least now it should not be um, clipping when it goes through to broadcast. You can see on her face is still quite bright and this area up here is less than ideal and we still have a, a incorrectly white balanced image. So what's going on in this primary color correction that I've put on? Let's double click on that. You can see at the top that I have a uniform exposure reduction of minus seven units and that has brought everything under this 100% line. I find that often when footage comes in at the wrong level, all of the footage will be the wrong level. So it's ideal to first correct that. So all of my corrections start with this basic premise that the, the value in this case was over 100% and needed to be corrected down. Now everything can take place within this range. Of course not all footage is incorrect like this and if you have footage that's correctly exposed at 100% then you can do all the modifications in the regular primary color correction tool. So let's first of all look at correcting this white balance. I can see on the vector scope that it's all over on this other side pointing towards the yellow region on the left and towards red and green. Uh, that's yellow. So we'll go up to white balance and on the temperature slider I'm going to slide that down to something like minus 20 or minus 19. Now it's starting to look a little bit blue but you can see that the image is sliding back towards the center here so that it doesn't have such a bias. Let's also change the green value which is a component of yellow in this case for video I might slide that down to about 17 and now we can see that the image is considerably more neutral than it was before and in fact on the waveform monitor you can see that the peak values are much more white whereas before they had a color cast of yellow green at the top so that looks pretty correct now the other thing that I'd like to explain is the other tools that you have at your disposal. This item at the top is called the lift tool and that pushes the image up from the bottom. You can see on the waveform that the whole image is rising as I push that up. Let's undo that. And underneath I have the gain value. If I push up gain it stretches everything from the top so the bottom doesn't move up but the top stretches up to its maximum position and you can see that the image is becoming clipped again. Now we don't want any of that. We've, of course we've corrected this so we don't want to go beyond 100%. The gamma value of the middle of the picture we can still use this to brighten our image up and if I move that value you can see the whole image moves up and down within those limits but they don't go below 0 and they don't go above 100. 
So we'll be using the gamma correction to brighten or darken our images. And this will keep it within the legal boundaries. Now the other tool that I need to bring to your attention is the curve tool at the bottom. That's this wiggly line, or it doesn't look wiggly, but if I bend it like this, it does. This tool actually gives you control of contrast. So to increase contrast, you slide these nodes across like this and make the line in the middle more vertical so that it transitions from dark to light more quickly. And now you can see that there is a lot more contrast in the image. That is, everything transitions from dark to light very quickly. Of course, you can do the reverse. If I slide those nodes back the other way, like this, I can reduce contrast in image. And this is very handy if you have GoPro footage that's very contrasty, you can quite easily correct the contrast profile. One other thing that's worth noting is that I can change the contrast of just the white areas or just the dark areas by sliding only one or two of these nodes. For example, if I feel that the girl's face is just a little bit too burned out, like up here, then what I can do is slide that node across so I make it a more gradual change from dark until light. And now I have less of a hot spot on her face. You can do this for buildings as well. And sometimes skies get quite burned out and look very bright. You can correct them somewhat by doing that. The other thing you could do is bring down the peak white value so that it rolls off more gently. But of course, if you look at the waveform monitor, they are also decreasing. Generally speaking, Having white lights that are actually white is not a bad thing, but people's faces tend not to go to pick white like a light. So that's what we're trying to control there. Now at the bottom of the image, we can see that it's also not quite dark enough. So let's restore some of that contrast by pulling this down. And you can see the bottom of the waveform is reducing. So this is our darks node. You can pull it across for contrast, or you can pull it down for a more immediate response. Now the other thing worth noting is that when we've increased gamma or increased brightness by pushing up gamma like this, we'll tend to desaturate the image. So what you need to do is put saturation back in. So whenever you increase brightness, you lose chroma. And the same is true the other way. If we reduce the brightness of an image by putting more contrast in like this, you can see that there is more color in the darker regions, but also in her face looks a bit unnatural. Click OK. Now let's have a quick look at before and after. We can do that by turning off the primary color corrector that we have on there. That's what it looked like before, and this is with our correction. So I think that looks a lot more natural. What about the next shot? The next shot's not quite as extreme, but it's also quite yellow. The first thing I'll do is make sure my previous shot is highlighted grab its primary color correction that we've made and apply it to the next shot. And that certainly made the image look more correct, but you'll notice that it's a little bit dark. Let's just fix that quickly, opening up this color tool. I'm going to actually push back in some gamma with the gamma tool so we can brighten up the overall image without really changing the contrast at all. Okay, but does that work with the previous shot? I think so, the ceiling certainly looks about right. Another way of checking is to grab the sequence that we have open and load it into your preview window. So I'll grab it from my bin and drop it into the preview window. And now, if I park on the previous shot, I can see what that looks like compared to this shot. Let's go to the next shot. I will grab that primary color corrector and we'll put it on this shot as well. So now some of the yellow has been taken out, the wall is corrected, and their hands seem correctly bright, skin tone value. Let's move on to the interview. So the interview is suffering from a similar problem. She has a burned out nose and the wall is kind of the wrong color. Let's grab our primary color correction effect that we've been using and apply it to the shot. Now the shot has cooled down a little bit. I don't think this white's quite right. I may have got that a little bit wrong. Let's open the 
primary color corrector up. Restore a little bit more yellow to that shot. And you can see they're converging in the center to be more correct. I'll take out a bit of chroma. Her lips seem a little bit too red there. And maybe pull down some mid-tone. You can see her face here is this region on the waveform monitor. That ready, yellow, orangey ready field is her face. That's this region here. So that's what we're aiming for 65% to be a peak value for her nose. Possibly she needs a little more contrast. So let's change that contrast node by dragging it to the right a little bit, making the image a little bit more darker, but without ducking below that 100%. Now elsewhere in this story, there are other difficult shots. If I close that for a moment, you can see these are quite dark and this one's quite blue. So I might pick on this one for a moment. If we grab the 20% reduction, because I believe that these shots were all in very high, even though they look underexposed, if there's any peak white values in them, they'll be over the level and they'll be clipped un unusually. We can't see anything just at the moment, but I can tell you that they are all over level. So I've put that on, it's corrected it back down to being correctly underexposed, but it is all rather blue. So let's double click on our primary color corrector here and take some of the blue out by adding in some yellow. And you can see, whoops, sunset. You can see now that I've deviated too far. I'll wind that back. Until we get a more reasonable balance on the concrete. Now we do need to brighten up the inside of the image. So let's put in some gamma. But now our contrast profile is pretty obviously wrong. So let's push that across the black blacks node and we might brighten up the image a little as well by increasing our roll off at the top. You can see that the sky is coming up and so is this concrete floor. We don't want to do that too much because we still want to look inside. I'm increasing the contrast from inside the container now to the blacks region. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to close that, go over to my primary color corrector, turn it on and off. I don't want to burn the sky out too much because that also looks unnatural. Into the next shot was a little bit too bright. And you can see the levels are over again. Remember what I said, this source all came from the same place. So the levels are all technically the same, incorrect. If I put that on though, I've raised the image up too much. So let's alter that primary color corrector and pull the gamma back down. Remember how I said we can use that for our bright overall brightness control? You wouldn't normally do this for proper color correction, but for news it's certainly the easiest way to stay legal while you're doing these corrections. Now before I go, I've changed the contrast profile so that it's still darker at the bottom. I might pull that back up now because we're at a big door. There's probably going to be more light, but also more opportunity for there to be dark shadows. Let's click OK and play through this shot. Now you can see on the vector scope, there is some chroma up here, which is this red vest or box in the background that's illegal. And what will happen is the red will go out of bounds and be clipped. And there's the possibility that it will do something unusual further down the stream in broadcast. And we don't want that. You might end up with unusual colors or weird bleeding happening. So we can put on this effect called the chroma legalizer and that adds another effect to the to the clip and you can see here that we've controlled for that that um, very very bright color if i click on the primary color corrector and i push up the chroma to a ridiculous level yes it's out of bounds now but that's because with this effect turned on we've effectively turned off any following effects so we can't see what's happening with the yuv curve or the chroma legalizer if i turn that off watch what happens Okay, it's being corrected back down again. And you can keep stacking those chroma legalizers on top until they get back within bounds. Of course, way too much chroma in this. Let's just pull that right back. Another thing worth mentioning 
is sometimes you get video that's very much over level. Uh, often it can come from a computer source that just does not match our broadcast standards and doesn't fit with the other footage on the timeline. Now I know this has a lot of artifacts and I have mocked it up to be bad, but what you can do to try and overcome these issues on the waveform monitor and the vector scope is to apply some other effect. Now in the broadcast safe folder, there is another item called highlight toe clip soft and highlight toe clip hard. So if I put that on that clip, the clip hard, you can see that it's cut straight across the top and straight across the bottom to legalize the image. So technically that's legal and could go to air. There is another one though called the highlight toe. So the highlights and the toe, which is the bottom of the image clip soft. So it will also cut it off, but it will roll off a little more naturally. So if I apply that, you can see that the image has been squashed down. So instead of being cut off and lost, the information has been pushed down and pushed up at the bottom and top. So that tends to be a more natural way to correct the images. And of course, we still have the too much chroma problem, which I would apply probably more than one. Nope, one chroma reduction. So one chroma legalize effect has fixed that. Now, of course, the image is not fixed, but at least you can repair images that are well out of bounds quite quickly just by applying those two effects. So that's been a crash course into color grading for news on EDIUS. Uh, I hope you enjoy cutting with EDIUS and color grading with EDIUS, especially when you have bad, poor footage. I won't say bad footage, but certainly poor colored footage because everything helps at the end of the day, especially when you're editing news. Look in the links for access to the uh, download for, for my broadcast safe filters. They should be quite easy for you to use in different items in news from day to day. Thanks very much for watching and happy editing. Is that a verb?